All right, as the men are going about receiving the offering for the radio station, if you turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter, uh, chapter number uh, 3, and um, for those of you that thought we would never make it out of verse 7, uh, we are going to make it out of verse 7 and into verse 8. So we'll try for that. Philadelphia, uh, my favorite church out of the seven. Um, sticks in my mind what Brother Fred was asking prayer for. Uh, and uh, our dear prayer warrior missionary lady here who always asks for some common sense in our government. Uh, folks, I want to tell you, things are happening at an extremely rapid pace. Do you realize how much happens from one Sunday service, from one Sunday when we meet, what happens in those fall till the next Sunday? I mean, it's incredible what takes place. Um, I was thinking of the pastor this morning as uh, Brother William was talking about the, the flood there up in Tennant. I mean, everywhere you look, um, and Romans chapter 8 talks about just from the, uh, the, the situations and all of the things that go on weather-wise and everything in the world. This, this creation groaneth and travaileth uh, it's coming. Yes, brother. Yes, right. Yeah. Um, uh, just very briefly, I appreciate those of you that prayed for our family. Um, I have a lot of different... My family has some saved in it, and it has a bunch of unsaved. Uh, we've got Catholics, I've got somebody married in an Episcopalian church, uh, there's Mormons, I mean, and I've got, no, it's just, thankfully my mother came to know the Lord, I'm going to guess 10, 12 years after I was already in the pastorate. Uh, my wife's first generation Christian in her family, I was first generation in mine. And my parents got saved later on. Uh, but my mom passed away this past Wednesday morning uh, uh, at the age of 90. And uh, just one statement that uh, my sister sent me that was in a, the request that she left behind. And this is my mother writing. When my life on this earth has ended and I have gone to be with the Lord, these are my wishes. Well, just that statement uh, brings reassurance to me and comfort to me. By the way, if you read uh, in the book of Acts, uh, the account of the rich man in hell, he did not want any of his brethren, his family, to go where he was. Um, the greatest thing you can do for yourself and for your family is to make sure you're saved. That'll give comfort. Now, everybody loves their mother, except those the scripture records as without natural affection. Everybody loves you. I love my mother. Uh, and I'm going to see my mother again. Uh, why is that? Well, she believed in Jesus Christ. Uh, make sure you're saved. Revelation chapter 3, church at Philadelphia. My favorite church, a church that was not rebuked of the Lord. A uh, church that was not told to repent as five of the others were anyway. Uh, verse 7 is where we've been for quite a while and we are going to make it into verse 8. 
Um, and the angel, verse 7, let me reread. And the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy. And we talked about the holiness of God and the righteousness of God. He that is true. We talked about truth. Uh, he is the way, the truth, and the life. You have a copy of that truth on your lap this morning. If you've got an old English KJV 1611 Byzantine majority text King James Bible, uh, it not only contains the Word of God, it is the Word of God. Uh, there's going to be an untold number, according to the book of Revelation, saved during the tribulation period. But there's been an awful lot of people saved out of an old King James Bible, the English-speaking world. Um, truth, the Word of God. It goes on to say, uh, He that hath the key of David, and let me, uh, we're, I guess keep your finger here and go back to Isaiah 22, 22. Just very briefly, let me read it. Isaiah 22, 22. And it talks about uh, same thing that's recorded in this verse. Isaiah 22, 22. It says in Isaiah 22, 22, And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut, and none shall open. So as it records it here in verse 3, He that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. By the way, if God opens a door, it's open. Uh, I think about the time that, going back to the time span when Ronald Reagan became president and the wall came down uh, between East and West and old Gog Magog uh, over there, uh, Russia, they had problems, and we actually helped pick them up again. You know, give us some sense in Washington. Uh, but anyway, there was a door open where there was an influx that went in of the gospel into Russia. Uh, well, that's already several decades in back of us now. But if the, it doesn't matter if it's there or somewhere else. If God uh, um, opens a door, it's open in spite of what man does. And if a door is closed, it's going to be closed in spite of what man does. He is ultimately in control. And folks, if that doesn't give you some peace and some rest you haven't digested it yet. Uh, I'm glad he's perfect. I'm glad he's holy. Uh, I do not understand, after studying the Bible all this time, why he chose, I'm personalizing it, why he chose to pay my sin debt. But he did. Now, I don't know who you are. Oh, I can look at you. But I really don't know who you are or what you've done or what you've been involved in in your life. But I can tell you this as part of the human race. It wasn't all pretty, was it? And yet, in your worst hour, he still died for the sinner. Uh, your sin debt 
has been paid. And believing in him is what will save your soul. Don't think you're so good this morning sitting there. The only goodness you have is that exchange that took place when he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He took your sin, my sin, upon himself. And he gave us the righteousness of God in its place. Uh, you're headed for a place you cannot even imagine how good it's going to be. How good it's going to smell. How good it's going to sound. And you're going to be with a bunch of people, the ecclesia, the called out ones. See, if you're saved, you're part of that. And every time the gospel is preached, Christ is preached, that call goes out. And it's just like it was in the book of Acts. And I realize that Acts was a transitional book and Dr. Luke wrote it kind of like a medical journal, you know, day by day events that happened, the church in chapter two and, and the Damascus road with Paul and all the rest of it. But it's just like it in one area. Every time the gospel is preached, every time Paul preached, some believed and some believe not. There are some people that aren't going to believe. The Bible tells us that. But if you have believed, you're part of an incredible group of people. I'm going to get to fellowship with you forever. And what we've got in common is that we've all been saved our sin has been washed away by the blood of Christ. And we're headed for a place, man, this retirement is out of this world. And by the way, I feel, I don't know about you, but I feel less welcome in this world. It used to be with every year that passed. It's now accelerated. Every month that's passed, and kind of like on a weekly basis. I have a hope, but it's in Jesus Christ. You got that hope? Uh, every passing year, more people that I know and love and are close to have already made that transition. They're already headed that way. Uh, make sure you know him. And by the way, never lose your thirst for the truth. Never lose your thirst from feeding on more of the truth. Uh, it'll help you in your growth and in your rest. You've got to rest in Christ. You're supposed to be working, but you're resting at the same time in Jesus Christ. Um, it says here in uh, verse 8, finally got to verse 8. Verse 8, Revelation 3 says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. So I guess you can say that this was the church of the open door. And, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. And look at this. And hast kept my Word, and has not denied my name. Now just remember, he puts his word above his name. The word of God, the truth. Um, look at Jeremiah 29, just briefly. Jeremiah 29, and these verses should be familiar. Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 13. Jeremiah 29, see, uh, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, will give you peace inside. 
uh, where it counts. Um, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, says this. By the way, you can't read these verses fast. You got to read them slow and think about what he is saying. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. See, the Lord thinks about you. Isn't that something? Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think about the Lord enough. Uh, I don't talk to him enough. That's prayer, by the way. Um, prayer can be audible or it can be your thought process that you direct toward him. By the way, is there any thought in your head that he doesn't know? No, he's God. He does know it all, every bit of it. In fact, he knows it before you think it. But he... Anybody here pray too much? I just want to see if there was anybody. No takers on that. We all neglect... something that we ought to pay more attention to. See, um, things change very rapidly. And there's a lot of things that can be changed with prayer. Um, Proverbs 21.1 The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. See, there's things that God can change that you can't. But if you pray, and it's within the will of God, 1 John chapter 5, he heareth you. And he can change the king's heart. And by the way, it doesn't have to be just a king. It can be an authority figure. It can be something bigger or more powerful than you. And God can change that. By the way, when God changes something, he changes it. And in the book we just read, if he opens it, it's opened. If he closes it, it's closed. But he has thoughts toward, I know the thoughts that I have toward you, he says. Uh, thoughts of peace. I like peace. I work in a noisy, dirty environment. It's either somebody hollering because they're trying to speak over the top of a diesel engine that's sitting there roaring, or the I work in a noisy, dirty environment. I come home to my house. I just want to get home. Get inside the door and shut the door. You know what there is in my house? Peace and quiet. Uh, peace. Look what it says here. Thoughts of peace and not of evil uh, to give you an expected end. We got a, a future and a hope. If your hope is in the Lord, by the way, if you're, was it 1 Corinthians 15, 58, therefore my beloved brethren be the steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You ought to be investing your time, your money, your ability in the Lord's work. It'll pay better dividends than what you get on Wall Street. And it's stable. Um, what is it? Some 30? Some 60? Some 100 fold? Didn't I get that right? Uh, 
work for the Lord. See, work hard, but be at rest. He's in charge. You need him. I need him on a daily basis. Uh, if you don't believe that you need him, you have not been beat up enough yet. Now the pastor has told us more than once that I can't get it exactly right, but I get the context of what he's saying. You're in a trial. You're coming out of one, or to borrow from the southern vernacular, you're fixing to go into one. So there are going to be rough times. And just remember that when God wipes away all tears from our lives, uh, from our eyes, it's almost at the very end of the Bible. And we're not at the very end of the Bible yet. Look what it says here. He says in verse 12, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. By the way, did you ever pray? And, and I realize there's different kinds of prayer. But did you ever pray in desperation? I mean desperation. I don't mean, Lord, please send me enough money so I can make a payment on my new bass boat. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay? Uh, but in desperation, you needed an answer. And in many cases, some of you will get this, some of you won't. You needed him to answer more than you actually needed the answer. Now that sounds like, a, but no, some of you know what I'm talking about. But it says right here, I will hearken unto you. Verse 13, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Are you still looking for him like that? Are you still looking for truth like that? Um, if you're saved, you got the Holy Spirit. No, you got him. And I should say, he's got you. You're sealed. He came in. He indwelt you. Um, now, you still got an old nature. But you got the Holy Spirit, and you have the ability to understand Scripture. You have the ability that when somebody gets up there and they open the book... You can understand the difference between truth and something that isn't truth. Now, a lot of people are led today by feeling. And their faith is based on feeling. Don't go by that. You go by strictly what the book says. Um, it might produce a feeling, but it's more of a knowing uh, by the way, do you know that you know that you know that you know? Um, go ahead. Try and talk me out of salvation. You can't do it. You know why? It's not me. It's all him. And I say it reverently, not disrespectfully. God can't send me to hell. He can whoop on me. That's southern vernacular too. Whoop on me. He can take me to the woodshed. Book of Hebrews. Yeah. And I deserve it some of the time. So do you. You don't want to hear that. But he can't send me to hell. Because Jesus suffered that for me. Amen. He suffered it for you. Um, get that in your head and change your thinking to line up with what the scripture says. Repent. 
except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Line your thinking up with what the scripture says. Now, for those of you that here that are saved, you aren't ever going to get away from me. We might be separated for a short time, but you've got to put up with me forever. Uh, thankfully, at that point, I'll be glorified. So will you. Uh, it'll be a, now pastor refers to a lot of the folks as a, the good looking crowd. You all going to look better. Aren't you glad you're saved? Yes, sir. Uh, that you got what's real. Uh, don't base it on emotion. Base it on what the Word of God says. Uh, look at Romans chapter 1. Now, we were in 2 Peter uh, chapter 3 last week, but I, I never got to Romans 1. And I just want to read that quickly. Uh, Romans 1 and beginning... In verse 18, uh, see, the world thinks wrong, uh, totally wrong. I always thought of myself as a patriotic, flag waving American. And I still believe that America is the best place to live on earth. But we have sinned. Our thinking is not scriptural. Um, what was it, 72 or 73? Roe versus Wade. When was that? 73. Let's see, my wife and I got saved, uh, got married in 72, so a year before that. We've been married 49 years, so Roe versus Wade's been around 50 years. How many babies has this nation offered in sacrifice to Molech in 50 years? Enough to populate another whole nation. Now you're going to tell me, and people all say, God bless America. Well, I want God blessed America. And just like the Jews in the Old Testament, God would bless them. They'd walk with him for a little while. Then they'd get themselves into trouble. We walked with God for a while. We done got ourselves in trouble. Uh -huh. Nobody wants to hear that. There's a law of sowing, or maybe I should say biblical principle. Sowing and reaping. Growing up, my kids used to throw that back at me. They got so sick of me saying that to them. You're gonna reap what you sow. We have. We've begun to. By the way, for those of you that like to study prophecy, find the good old USA in Scripture. You're going to have a hard time doing that. Tarshish and her young lions is about as close as I can come. Not a lot said. But I'll tell you what. We are on those believers, those who are the called out ones, we're on the winning team. I'm going to get to have a white robe and ride on a horse that I don't know how to ride anyway when I come back in his army. You might know how to ride a horse. I don't know how to ride a horse. It's got an engine in it. I can make it go. If it's a horse, I'm not so sure about that. I'm on the winning side. You're on the winning side. Uh, how about your family? 
How about the people you work with? How about the people you know through some business arrangement or the people you come in contact with? Um, I'm going to read fast and refrain from commenting much because otherwise I won't make it through. I wanted to get through this last week because anyway, we're talk, going to talk about an open door and a closed door. Romans 1 verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. If you want a explanation of verse 18, that's found in verse 25 same chapter explains it more clearly verse 19 uh, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God hath showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse and then verses 21 to 23 the seven steps down that we have taken as a nation by the way because when they knew God, step one, they glorified him not as God, step two, neither were thankful, step three, but became vain in their imagination, step four, and their foolish heart was darkened, step five, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, step seven, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible men, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and to creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up, he gave them up in verse 24 to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own body between themselves. Verse 25, and this clearly explains verse 18, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. If you hear a lie long enough and loud enough, like we hear in the media and other places, and it's over and over and over and over, people finally accept it even though it's totally wrong they'll believe it they hear it. they changed it they've changed it um, 30 seconds for this God this cause God gave them up he gave them up in 24 he gave them up in 26 likewise verse 27 the men also verse 28 he, in verse 28, he gave him over, gave him up, gave him up, gave him over. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness. That's quite a list. Verse 32, who knowing the judgment of God and they that which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. There are some people that will never believe. We don't know who they are because at the last minute, as long as they're alive and breathing, maybe the Holy Spirit, maybe the Word of God that somebody gave to them, the Holy Spirit, it will strike and, and they'll, they'll stop. First time I ever heard the gospel, I was scared to die. And four months later, I heard the gospel and it just stopped me dead in my tracks. I knew it was the truth. I knew it. Never heard anything like that before. Aren't you glad you're saved? I'm 30 seconds over.